Hello there guys and girls and everything that's in between and welcome to a Tactics Rome 2 online video. Today I've got two battles for you guys in one. And the focus of this video is going to be dictating the time when we take engagements, how we take engagements, and uh, kind of recognizing uh, the, the faults, uh, the faults, kind of recognizing the strengths and weaknesses of of an army. So when you bring a build sometimes, um, it looks nice on paper, um, and you think to yourself, okay, this is a cool build, I might be able to pull it off. Then you take a look at your opponent's army, and much is the case with me here, you'll quickly notice that he has the infantry advantage, and he actually has the skirmish advantage. Pontus, overall, isn't a faction that has lots of elite troops. So I'm gonna need to use my troops very effectively, and I'm more importantly going to have to be able to dictate when the engagement starts. So that's a very important thing. Your opponent might have a better army, he might have more advantages than you, but that doesn't mean you're out of the game. So the first thing I notice here is that he has the skirmish advantage. His Celtic Slingers uh, have, I think, three less we weapon damage. Yeah, three less missile damage than my Easterns. But they have lots more armor. And actually better morale also. So in an extended skirmish fight, these guys are going to win. They have the same range, obviously. So really, the only thing that's to my favor is these four Scythian mercenary horse archers, and I've got five total cav, four of these uh, royal pontics, and one of these a noble blood cav. Noble blood cav is, is a great unit. It's uh, I, I personally love it. I think it's it needs to be used more often. But anyway, so the fight's gonna start here. My opponent is going to basically play this right at the beginning. He's going to start the skirmish engagement. Notice how he is target firing all of his guys on one of my uh, Eastern Slingers at once. If this keeps up, um, my guys are going to get decimated quite quickly. So I'm actually going to bring in... Let's put this on slow-mo. I'm going to bring in my Scythian Mercenary Horse Archers. And the reason, I, the reason I'm bringing these guys in now is because I want to kind of entice a reaction off of him. I want to try and spot an opening to maybe get an assault off against one of these Slingers. I need to make sure that the skirmish advantage goes to my side and th that's because I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna be able to win the calf fight. He has two uh, light horses and two noble horse, my four pontic cav and one noble cav and the four Scythian mercenaries can easily handle that. So notice how I'm just gonna keep slowly retreating with my hoplite line and I keep my guys forward here. Here I'm trying to entice a reaction, I want him to come forward with his infantry. I want to open a gap up uh, to be able to hit his uh, skirmisher line, which has effectively stopped firing at my guy. So this little cav maneuver over here has actually got him facing my cav, and you can see I've piled up lots of troops on this flank. I've got swordsmen coming in, I've got one pontic cav that came from the left, and I've got the the, uh, the Scythian mercenaries as well as one of the noble cav here, that uh, the noble blood cav that hit the light horse. So he's being drawn towards um, towards me now, and I notice that, okay, well, his, his swords are coming forward way too much. Uh, look, I'm not going to push forward yet. I want them to come as close to me as possible. This is going to open a gap in the middle, and it's going to allow me to take out his skirmishers. So this is what I'm talking about when I say dictating when the engagement happens. This is These are small little uh, skirmish fights, kind of. Pre-fights, if you like. I'm winning small victories, I'm taking, uh, you know, two light horses away. One would argue that this is lots of units to take two units of light horse away. Uh, you know, to fight two units of light horse, but I'm gonna do it because it's gonna slow him down. He manages to engage one of my Pontic Swords here with his uh, Galatian Legionaries. He's actually gonna take that fight and win it quite easily. Um, but again, he is isolated. His cav is isolated. His back lines now. He's forced to kind of keep his spears over here. And I've uh, gotten rid of the rest of his cav. And now, now I can take the engagement. Because there's no more cav threat on this side. And I'm going to actually launch my own cav strike on the other flank. Pin down his units. Hopefully kill his general. And let's go ahead and hit play. Here are the charges. The uh, any sort of barbarian cavalry doesn't really have the best of charge, so this noble blood cavalry was 90 hit points, 70 armor, 46 attack is actually going to do really well fighting against them, and they have a 15 uh, 
versus a uh, large bonus, which is uh, five more, I think, than the yeah, five more than the noble horse. So now my opponent is in a bit of trouble. His uh, spears are uh, away from his infantry line where he wants them to be. His skirmishers, who could have destroyed my skirmishers in a frontal fight, ended up not really doing much. They fired a couple of volleys at my guys, and that's it. I pulled them away. And now I can bring in my Scythians who have been extremely effective and will continue to be effective in this fight. And again, I've taken really nice fights both on both flanks and this fight over here in the middle. It's not a fight that uh, I'm going to be able to win. His Naked Warrior slash Galatian Legionary combination is actually going to be able to cut through my Hoplites eventually. But as we all know in this patch, in the Emperor Edition, Hoplites are very tank units and they can uh, basically survive for a long time. My opponent's spears over here are getting torn apart by uh, uh, Archer Fire. And now I'm just going to use my Noble Blood Cavalry who already has 70 kills to kind of get rid of these um, Celtic Slingers. And now I've just, with this move, I've ended the game. Uh, because even if he wins now with all of his infantry, his cavalry is basically dead, his general is about to die. Uh, his skirmisher is going to be out of the fight. I'm going to have lots of skirmishers and lots of Celtic, uh, lots of uh, Eastern Slingers, sorry, uh, left. So you saw there, he actually did have a better army. I believe if he played a little bit better, a little bit more cautiously, he would have been able to take the fight very easily. He had to keep all of his units close to each other, but he let me dictate when the fight would start. And because he had a stronger army, I basically had to divide it up, which I did. I took fights with the Cav away from the Spear, I took the infantry engagement away from his skirmishers, and I left his skirmishers isolated and used the Cav to uh, kind of surround and hit them. Three Spear units are not really going to be able to protect four uh, skirmishers unless your micro is like insane. <laughs> and even then it's, it's a very difficult task. So that was the first battle I wanted to show you guys. Uh, this was against Whitehawk, Gigi's Whitehawk. Uh, Pontus is probably one of my favorite factions, if not my favorite faction in the game. Just because they don't really have anything that's ultra strong or ultra elite. So you kind of have to use your Pontic army in, a, in this kind of style, in a combined arms approach. and You have to dictate the fight. You have to be aggressive with a faction that doesn't really have the means to be aggressive. So it's always a challenge. So let's move on to the next fight. Alright, so here we go. This is battle number two. This is against VM's Swago. And this is actually the first time I used the Adrissian Kingdom. I recently purchased the, uh, the the DLC. There was a big sale. And I think I bought all the DLCs for $13. Now that's a deal. So in this fight, things are a little bit different. I don't want to hasten the infantry engagement. I actually want to do the opposite. Now usually when you play against Parthia you'd expect something like lots of calves, strong skirmishers and I figured well I'm just you know I'm just gonna play it the way I see it. I brought four of these uh, Dacian Spears and five Thracian Slingers. These guys can't really fight against anything that's infantry based like if you throw basically any unit at them they're very likely going to die very quickly but the key stat about these guys is that 25 bonus versus large. So. They're very good at killing cavalry, especially, uh, or mainly really, on the support. They can't really take uh, a charge uh, that well. So, my opponent actually brought a surprising army. He focused on uh, Parthian swords, and he also brought some hillmen. Uh, and I guess he did this because I thought he, maybe he expected me to bring lots of uh, elite Adrusian troops, like, um, like this guy over here. Where is he? I brought one of them. The uh, Thracian Nobles, 79 melee attack, 63 charge bonus, 45 weapon damage. That's not a joke, my friends. So these guys can kind of shred through troops. If I brought an army of only these guys, my army would have looked much smaller. So enough about kind of army composition and uh, trying to go through... Uh, both builds. Oh, one more thing before we do that. The Thracian Royal Cav actually have expert charge defense. So these guys can take shock calf charges very well. So at first glance, Parthia seems to have a um, a skirmish advantage over me. He has one more foot 
archer than my slinger and these aren't you know normal archers these are the parthian foot archers so that means they have 150 range and they have 40 missile defense um so they're they're gonna be able to take my skirmish force out if i let it happen uh that way so again i need to dictate the engagement i need to think about ways of uh turning this army which can actually handle my army pretty well uh, to towards my favor so okay what do i do well first of all i need to deny him access to my back lines you'll notice that i've sent troops over there on the far left troops on the far right and i want him to bring his archers forward so i can actually start weakening them my infantry line is definitely not up to they're not up to scratch to be able to fight these Parthian swords with the Hillman support. If they get surrounded by basically any two units, they're dead. So, alright. I need to engage uh, with the skirmishers only. And I need to make sure that the infantry fight only happens when he doesn't have any cav. And only when his back lines are in disarray. So I'm going to start bringing in some of these Thracian Cavalry. I really always like to bring uh, some kind of skirmish units, uh, at least mounted ones, to be able to do this kind of thing. Just harass, force these units out of position. You can see this now I basically evened out the fight just because these guys were forced to run back. And these guys are light cavalry, so they're fast enough to be able to uh, run away from any kind of cataphract or heavy cav that wants to chase them. So... The skirmish fight has started. My opponent is, uh, I don't know if this is a mistake or this is a smart thing. He's actually targeting my infantry line instead of targeting my uh, archers. I think he was overly confident that his cav would be able to take my cav. Uh, and he saw that I basically didn't have any infantry. So maybe he was thinking, okay, if I can kill off his infantry line, I can basically charge right through them and kill his archers, which is sound thinking. Uh, he could have been thinking that. But I'm not going to let that happen. You can see I'm constantly uh, pushing and prodding with cav units from all uh, angles. I'm using my Thracian horsemen here. I think I have four, uh, four of those. Yeah, four of those. I'm using them to kind of keep the cataphracts from uh, engaging. And it's working well. The disarray that's being caused here is causing his guys to, um, to start to waver. They're moving a lot. They're repositioning, whereas my line is just standing firm and taking shots into his skirmishers, which are super bunched up at this stage. So here we are. Decent kills so far on my uh, on my units. Remember, these are much cheaper than the Parthian foot archers, and you can see here my opponent still trying to push forward with his infantry. I don't want the engagement to happen yet. He has lots of free cav units. Look. He's got his general, he's got one here, he's got two here. His back lines are nice and tight. I can't really uh, take the fight just yet, so I'm just going to fall back. There's no reason to take the fight, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to set loose this unit of Thracian nobles. They're just going to come in with those faxes, and they're just going to... Look at that. Slice through this unit of Parthian swords. They're going to take initial uh, damage, initial casualties, but this actually slows slows them down pretty well. One of my uh, light uh, light cav units was cut, unfortunately, but here I'm going to take a charge against this um, against these cataphracts while they're in the forested area. That means they're going to be void of their charge bonus. And now my Adrissian cav is just going to come here, the Thracian cav, sorry, Thracian royal cav is going to come here uh, and do the damage. So look what I'm doing. To slow down the advance, and to pin down his cavalry, I'm going to send in cav units at different angles. So I send in cav here to attack the swordsman from the rear. He's forced to send a cataphract towards it. This cataphract is locked. I attack his general with one of my Thracian royal cav units. Over here he tries to trap my general with two Parthian swordsmen, but this unit of Thracian royal cav is a tank. It's going to do really well in an extended melee. And now you can see that all of his cav units are basically engaged. My light cav are running absolute... Look at this. They're, they're going crazy on the back lines. I can just keep running away with them like that. And now I can take the fight. But look, I don't take it frontally. I just pull my uh, hillmen or no, what are the guys? Yeah, the Dacian spears. I'm just going to pull them away. And just keep raining hell with my uh, slingers who are starting to get lots of kills in this fight. And again, a theme that you saw also in the last battle. Look at how his forces are split up. I've dictated that 
where the fights were going to happen. The, the skirmish fight was something that I didn't have. The advantage wasn't mine. The infantry fight, the advantage wasn't mine. The cav was, I think I did have a slight advantage, but it was there. So I pinned down his cavalry units, then I used my light cav very effectively. Look at some of the kills on these light cav. This is a light cav with 80 range, getting, you know, 80 kills, and I think they cost 400 or something around that. So they're being very, very cost effective. And notice, again, combined R's. Dacians with this Thracian noble unit, who's going to start tanking even more. And then this Thracian royal calf coming in from the rear. So again, going back to the theme of the episode. Dictating the fight. See, this is what I wanted to happen. Units like this, stuck between archers uh, or slingers, really unable to do much. I'm just, see, I'm just going to fall out. I'm just going to fall out, let him chase take shots at him from all angles he doesn't have the cav to be able to chase my guys down that's what I was planning in the very uh, beginning so I'm not saying that you know all battles in all battles that you play online you should have a plan that needs to work perfectly at all times or something like that but I definitely feel that even in cases where you have the inherent disadvantage in builds you should always look for a way to be able to turn that around and you saw in these fights and in the previous battle I did that simply by attacking weak spots and forcing action in areas where my opponent either didn't want the fight or it wasn't perfectly optimal for him to take the fight. So over here I lost a lot but I also took care of his eastern cataphracts. I used all of my cav on my right flank with the light cav support. So I essentially threw away 6 units to take care of 2 eastern cataphracts and a hillman. But that allowed me to do things like this. To be able to skirmish very well. And you can see that the kills on my slingers is extremely high. 42, that one is running. This one has 80. This one has 48. This one's also running, but has 47. And here come the uh, Dacian spears supported by the Thracian nobles. The Thracian nobles oh, actually also tanked uh, a good bit. They got 186 kills and that's going to continue rising. I think the key aspects of this battle was the fact that my opponent maybe... Uh, he probably was aware of this, but... This unit over here really, really liked them. The Thracian uh, Royal Cav. With their expert charge defense, this means that when these guys get charged by strong shock cav, the charge bonus kind of gets nerfed. It gets nullified. Which means that they can fight units and come out with 50, 41 men. Especially when you use them uh, with support of other units. So that's going to end today's episode, guys. I hope you took uh, a little bit of uh, some of my advice uh, in handy. I hope it can help you in some of your battles online. Please remember to like the video and tell me a comment. Thinking, um, tell me, you know, what you think of the video. Um, if you'd like to see anything specific, since I have all the DLCs now, I can, uh, I can basically play with any faction you guys like. Or if you have a tactics uh, video idea or would like to see me uh, play in a specific manner or specific style, do let me know in the comments section below. Thank you all for watching. I'll leave you to watch the end of this battle and I'll see you all next time. Take care.